Hi, Malk. Well, this is exciting. Never had an e-debate before, save for a terse exchange with John Lewis's complaints team over the difference between manufacturing defect and customer misuse. How do you misuse a shoe? Anyway, let me know whether you want to go first or second. Not trying to play mind games, but I'm happy to let you go first. Most people agree it's easier to go first, so if you want to go first, you can go first. Do you want to go first? Yours, Alan Partridge. Dear Alan, happy to go first. Brexit's idiotic. It'll be like committing suicide by walking into a door over and over again for years. Leave us our imbeciles. Over to you. Dear Malcolm, uh, <coughs> I do hope we can have a dignified discourse because, as hot potatoes go, Brexit is up there with the NHS, North Korea and the cycle lane epidemic. I guess my opener would have to be the ballot box. You hear a lot of grumbling from Ramonas, uh, whether teenagers, The Guardian or whoever, but when push comes to shove, the Leavers were in the majority. It's, it's not about wanting to go back to some rose-tinted nostalgic view of ye old England, with bobbies on bicycles, warm beer, red telephone boxes and post offices run by a friendly grey-haired couple with pink faces. But wouldn't that be wonderful? I once saw a film by a called uh, Went the Day Well. It's a chilling warning about a fictional Nazi invasion of a sleepy English village during the war. Luckily, the villagers, including a young and rudely fetching Thora Heard, mustered up all that plucky British spunk and machine-gunned and beat the Nazis to death. I think the uh, postmistress put a spade through a German's head. That is the kind of attitude we need to get this country back on its feet. Alan. Dear Alan, it's reassuring that people think the way you do. Your thoughts are a benchmark. Not in the literal sense, like in the park when someone spilled noodles or whatever, shut themselves. Not like that. I mean a benchmark where you go, well, someone actually generally thinks that. That's really the baseline. The idea that people can think everything will be okay in the long run, as long as we stop thinking negatively about how much money we've got left, or whether our occupational therapist has been sent back to Montenegro. I don't blame you for wanting to recreate the 19th century. After all, how hard can it be? Rebuilding a slave economy empire. Over to you, Richard Branson, you bearded fucking human conquer. Although I digress. Brexit has indeed brought together a diverse community of fellow travellers, much like a cancer ward might. Oh, could you play Don't Cry For Me Argentina for my old nan? She died in 1973. Dear Malcolm, I'm truly sorry to hear about your nana. I know how tough it can be to lose a loved one. My Uncle George was a bit of a surrogate dad to me taught me to ride my bike when I was twelve. So when he died, I took it hard and smashed up my shed with some hammers. But I also know how liberating it can feel when a loved one leaves after staying with you for a prolonged period. And that's how I and millions of others feel about the EU. We've enjoyed having Brussels kip in the spare room, sharing some Christmas cheer, but we want the spare room back now for storage or whatever and I've had enough of asking what Poland wants for dinner, or if Greece minds turning the TV down because the volume is absolutely ridiculous. That's a metaphor, but it's one that works really well. Alan. P.S. Compliments on your writing. In spoken interviews, I find your accent hard to understand, but to your credit, you write without a hint of a Scottish accent. It's really refreshing. Stay within your wonderful house-sharing metaphor. You might find that when all your EU guests depart, there's no one to pick the fruit in the garden, or change your bedpan, or fix the shower. You're also overlooking the fact that they were paying their way, and you will have a massive hole in your rental mortgage. To recap, you are now starving and unwashed, surrounded by overflowing turd pans in an about-to-be repossessed home. But hey, maybe you've got an old-fashioned blue passport to make up for it. 
You could go on holiday to Rhodesia. And if the pound is worth fuck all, you can barter with some innovative jams. You're probably just saying this is all Project Fear, which in your head completely destroys my argument. But may I present my counter-argument? You'll find it between the index and ring fingers of my right hand, and I'm holding it up right now. P.S. I'm sorry you find my accent hard to understand. You yourself have a very strong regional accent, which explains your massive success as a regional broadcaster. Hi Malcolm, sorry for a delay in coming back to you. Uh, was on a city break to Stoke. D- don't bother. But before we get into the HDP, heavy duty politics, I was wondering if you could tone down the blue language a bit. I appreciate you have a stressful job, but uh, but my assistant reads my emails aloud to me, and when she sees obscenities, she gets all flushed, and bits of stringy white saliva gather in the corners of her mouth. Have you thought about trying mindfulness? I know three people who have given it a go. One of them killed himself, but it worked wonders for the other two. Ciao for now. Dear Alan, Andrea Lidson, that's an obscenity for you. Once a week I have to Google that she ran for PM, just to check I didn't hallucinate from having snorted heroin. Don't worry, it was refined for proper British poppies. None of that Afghan muck. I'll sign off with some HDP to get us back on track. As a Brexiteer, you want to close our borders, but you also love free trade. How do you square those two positions? The EU says you can't have both. Not sure if it needs an analogy, but to me it seems like you want to have your cake, eat it, puke it back up, and sell it back to the cake shop at a profit, and have the baker deport it. Fine if it was poor Hollywood. I'm sure we could both agree on that. Mark. Malcolm, I would love to see Paul and his family deport it. In my version, he gets sent to Thailand and takes a bag of flour with him to bake with, but they find it at customs and assume it's cocaine and don't even test it. And he's saying, It's just flour! It's just flour! And they're all, Pull the other one! And anyway, he ends up in a prison in Bangkok for absolutely ages. But in answer to your question, Who said I was a Brexiteer? I had never said I was a Brexiteer. What makes you so sure I'm a Brexiteer? You seem so certain I'm a Brexiteer, Malcolm. What if I told you I always agree with both George Osborne and Michael Gove? Or that I'd love to see both Nigel Farage and Ken Clark slip on a wet floor in the gents and crack their heads on the side of a urinal? Not so easy to categorise now, am I, Malcolm? No, some of us would rather see how things pan out before we decide if we are or were a Brexiteer. And I'm not just saying that because you've asked a hard question about borders and trade. Yours, hoping the heroin bit wasn't true, Alan Partridge. Dear Alan, something that might surprise people about Nigel Farage is that in private he's actually more repulsive than he is in public, which, let's face it, is quite an achievement. Fine, you're not a Brexiteer. Let's try and find out what you are, then. I'll give you a series of words. You write down the first thing that pops into your head. By the way, thank you for having avoided using the words the people have spoken. They did speak, but they said many things at the same time. One of them was a simple fuck-off camera. Looking forward to his autobiography, I hear his working title is My Story, Shitting the Bed. Malcolm, that's me signing off. It's not another word for you to react to. The first word is sovereignty. Khaleesi. Sturgeon. Salmon. Duh. Ruth Davison. Michael Tooley. Chap I went to school with. Evasion. Invasion. And I wasn't being evasive. Tooley and Davidson are both narrow-mouthed people with glossy black hair. Fisheries. Chipperies. Borders. Hadrian. Is this helping at all? I lost my way a couple of times, uh, making up words, forgetting it was about the EU, etc. But I think I brought it back round in the end. And if it's made you feel even 1% less crabby, great. Should I do you now? I'll do, say, two. Then we can make closing arguments, meet somewhere in the middle, thank each other, say our bye-byes, and I can jump in the car and go to squash. Sound good? Your word is bulldog. See, that's not just a fucking word, is it, Alan? 
It's a dog whistle. It's a bulldog whistle for the mumbling army of I'm not racist, but housebound shit for brains, Brexit zombie fucks, whose entire experience of Europe has been Spanish lager with a full English and a day trip to Calais to fill up the boot with fucking contraband amaretto. Bulldogs ride up there with 1966 and take back control. And you can't say Christmas anymore, it's not hello. And just leave unaccompanied children refugees on the streets. The fucking free market will take care of them. Jesus Christ in a fucking Nando's Alan. Fuck your bulldog, which has terrible congenital problems, by the way. The horrific result of generations of inbreeding. I mean, Brexit is very popular in East Anglia, in places like North fucking Norfolk, for instance. Also, fuck all this little Britain, keep calm and bake off, fingers crossed. Let's go it alone, cock phlegm. Look at them, our Brexit figureheads. Those fucking balloon animals. Are you inspired, Alan? Would you follow them into battle? Michael Gove, the talking sea lion, that lying shit Boris Johnson, a 20 stone bin bag of fucking giblets and a Brian Jones wig? Shit off. These clowns whining and mewling about a return to traditional British values. How far are we going back, eh? The 1970s? The 1790s? Daniel Hannan, right? Daniel fucking Hannan. His Twitter bio starts with old wig. How is that not asking for a cock punch? Right on the tip when he's all aroused thinking of the returns of shillings and ounces of fucking polio. I know you want to interrupt, Alan. You want to tell me that the bulldog is Churchill and represents defiance, the battle of Britain, or all that fucking gluten. It's just, I mean, I'm no historian, but weren't the Nazis on the other side? Wasn't Churchill famous for twatting the Nazis? As opposed to listening to the Nazis' legitimate concerns about fucking immigration. What is the point in even arguing with you Brexit wankers? This isn't a political movement. It's a fucking death cult. Yeah, well done, everybody. We're getting off Angela Merkel's two-speed autobahn at the next junction. Then do you know where we're driving to, Alan? We're driving all the way to a lay-by on the A40. We're going to make sure the windows are up, switch on LBC, and light four disposable fucking barbecues on the back seat. Then we are going to drift off into oblivion, listening to some insufferable tumor, wheezing about borders and passports, all because that fucking human savoy David Cameron wanted a referendum. If you're still taking requests, I'd like to hear you easing an 18 pound salami up your fucking sinkhole. Dear Malcolm, uh, thank you for the debate. I can tell this is a subject you feel passionate about. Um, but I hope you're able to find some peace. I wish you well in your future endeavours, and as I say, thank you for the debate. Yours sincerely, Alan Partridge. Not for publication, but could you pass this on to Malcolm for me, please? Hi, Malcolm. Uh, just a quick one to say, if you ever speak to me like that again, I will have you physically harmed by two very big... Very loyal men I know. And next time you feel like slandering North Norfolk, or any of Norfolk, or even East Cambridgeshire, actually, I know people there as well, why not come here and say it? You've probably never even been to Norfolk, have you? Ever heard of the Boyle Brothers? They're a couple of beefy boys from Hunstanton who do a lot of work in my garden and would take you apart on my say-so. So watch it. And actually, your Scottish accent is coming through in your writing. Quite strongly. You sound like you're speaking with a mouth full of marbles, mate. So get to shite, your wee ball bag. Lynn, check the spelling and uh, send it on ASAP. And can you also get the bacon out the freezer? <laughs>